I'm here at the Warwickshire Event Centre because their auction takes place here, the Classic Car Auctions pre-Christmas sale, takes place Saturday, 11 a.m. But you're watching this on Thursday. This is the start of the preview sale, Thursday and Friday. You can bid online if you want to and register and live stream it, watch the whole event, or you can come here in person. It's entirely up to you. Go to classiccarauctions.co.uk. Anyway, let's crack on with my favourites in the room. I'm Johnny Smith, you're watching The Late Break Show. So as I said in the intro, if you're watching this on the Thursday when this vid comes out, this is the start of the viewing day. There's another viewing day tomorrow, Friday, if you want to have a look at that. You can go online and you can register if you don't want to be in the room on sales day on Saturday. There's 156 lots in the old catalogue that I got here. And I have to start with this car. One owner from new Escort Mexico. If it looks familiar on the Late Break Show, it's because it is. I did a really lovely barn find on this car. The family are wonderful people. It's such a rare car to have had in the family since new with every single piece of correspondence, service history, original bill of sale, the lot. I'm really intrigued to see what this car will sell for. The estimate is 25 to 30 grand. I would like to think that it's, it's worth 30 and a bit, uh, but I know it's been a difficult decision for the family to make, to let go of it. But whoever gets this car, I really hope will rejuvenate it sympathetically and keep that legacy that the family really want. So let's see what this, what this thing sells for. Goff, love the number plate. Goff, it's my favorite, my favorite ex Escort Mexico color too. There's a couple of other fast forwards. You've probably seen the RS 3.1 right next to it. Now this is lot number 177. A very, very, very rare homologation Mark 1 Capri this. I've actually got a Mark 1 Capri barn find coming up, not an RS, but... So keep watching over the Christmas period. 177, here we go. Estimate 54 to 64,000 in Olympic blue, the RS 3100 uh, and this particular car has been immortalized in a corgi scale die cast model which is really really cool one of 27 examples produced in this color and it looks in very very good condition what does it say here bought the car in 2016 uh, and it's described as being amazingly original with some recommissioning done by the previous owner who bought it in 1979 and PDI'd the car at the supplying Ford dealership as a young apprentice. How cool is that? Yeah. Well, it's, it, it seems to be in very, very good order. And because it's a homologation car and because it's a rear wheel drive Ford, It'll be interesting to see if it goes beyond 64 grand, but I think the fact that it's also immortalized as a Corgi model, and it's a great color. Look at that duck tail. What a thing. Lot 140, 1998 Honda Integra DC2 Type R. Now, this is estimated 16 to 20 grand, and I see no reason why it won't with 45,000 miles and one owner from new. So it looks quite honest, a little bit faded in places, but the fact that it's a one owner car, I think it'll see more than 20 grand. What I would say, this kind of car is rising in value quicker than we're seeing cars like Sierra Cosworths and stuff like that. I think this is going to be the next kind of Sierra Cosworth. They're held in such regard because of the gaming generation like Gran Turismo, that kind of stuff. I think in the next, what, 10 years, these will be 100 grand. I really do believe that. Right, what else are we gonna tell you about this particular car? What's the mileage on this car actually? So in terms of the um, condition report, 104 out of 135 points, that is not bad at all. Um, service history containing the original stamp service book, MOT valid, yes it is. 45,000 miles, yeah. Wow, that is not a lot at all. Of course, thinner, windscreen glass, lightened all round. It's got that motor in it, the, um, the B18C, really interesting. Talking of Japanese cars though, these two cars behind me are of great interest. Two two-door Imprezas, but different. Right, okay, we've got two lots here, 171 and 179. They're both Impreza, classic shape Imprezas, both two-door. One of them's a P1, this one, 
and this one is a Japanese import type, type R, WRX STI Type R version 4. Let's start with this one. So this is done, I think it came into the country from Japan in 09 and it's done 64,000 miles, just over 100,000 kilometers. And in the last two years, it's had a, a bare metal repaint in the all glossy black, including the engine base. So someone's really gone to town on it. Same owner um, in the last nine years. Estimate 18 to 22,000 pounds. I actually think that's pretty good value but it's around about the same money as this. 20 to 25, so a smidge more, because the P1 seems to be more desirable than the, the grey import car, despite the fact that it has you know, water injected, uh, it's got electromechanical um, diffs in it and stuff like that. I think these are really nutty. But this, the 171 P1, right. This is done high mileage, this car. Doesn't necessarily make it a deal breaker for me. I do like a high mileage vehicle. Um, 147,000 miles. Yeah, it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. Same owner for the last decade, one previous before that, um, 16 stamps in the book. So I actually think, although it's a high mileage car, it's probably been quite well looked after. It hasn't been modified from what we can tell. Um, and some paint fading. I can see some micro blistering on the bonnet and on here. In fact, it's micro blistered on lots of the panels. It seems to be wearing its mileage pretty well, all things considered. Which one would you have? I actually think I would have that one because I think that'll go for less money and I don't think it's a lesser car. I think these are glorious. I love the fact that a two door shell with a rear wiper, they just look great, don't they? No, this is a car I'm particularly fond of. I've always loved the Audi UR Quattro's. Um, and this is a late one. They launched in 7980. This is a 1990, so one of the very last 20 valve cars. And that's probably why I suspect it will go for at least the estimated 55 to 60 grand. I think it'll go more. It's done 138,000 miles, but the backstory for this is very interesting. So. It was bought new in Birmingham, the same as that Escort Mexico, but I'm fine, that was a, a Birmingham car. And it's been looked after by the same mechanic all of its life, to the point where it got left in the chap's will to the mechanic. So the same mechanic, he followed around from Audi dealerships to Ferrari dealerships to Porsche dealerships. It's got the original bill of sale. It's got 33 stamps in the pouch. Um, all of the history, and it's one of just 295 right-hand drive 20-valve cars built, and it's in this really rare Largo blue colour. You normally see them in black, white, grey. Doesn't it look fantastic? What's the condition score? 109 points out of 135. I mean, I really am fond of these. That Quattro diagonal fabric. The later cars I... I think I've got probably a, a bit, bit too modern a dash for me, but it's a car I've always wanted. Be really interested to see how this one goes. Like I said, this is a 40, old, 40 year old design now, right? And these cars are going for 70 grand at the top end. Those Imprezas and those Integras, they're gonna be this kind of money before you know it. What I love about the world of classics is you think that of a classic car and you look around this room and there's cars from the 50s, 40s, 30s, 60s, 70s. But this is a classic now. This is a 20 year old MX-5, but this is a very different 20 year old MX-5. It's near as damn it, delivery mileage. It's done 841 miles, I think. No, it's done 1,750 miles, but when it was 800 miles old, it was booked in to have a V6 Rocketeer conversion kit. If you don't know what this is, that is a three litre Jaguar slash four Duratec th uh, V6. Two, what, 292 horsepower, 300 horsepower, fits in beautifully, manual gearbox in what is a completely new fresh at the time mx5 so this was done in period when it was a new car and it seems to have just not been used since which baffles me why you do that um, estimated 25 to 30 grand this was a professionally done conversion this is not a home build and as you can see the great thing about the rocketeer conversion if you follow a chap called alex kirsten or to alex on youtube he had his mx5 converted it just works and it gives the MX-5 all the power that it ever, ever should have had. 
but what a rare opportunity. This is really interesting. It's a smart category N uh, salvage car. That's not interesting though, is it? You're looking at that because this is all a value. This is what you're looking to buy. 52K number plate. Believe it has an estimate of 45 to 50 grand. Some say it could be worth as much as 70 grand. <laughs> Fiesta forever, all night long. Well, talking of night, this is extremely black and dark and it was restored a couple of years ago. 1982 Mark I Fiesta XR2, 79,000 miles. And honestly, I think I've looked down the side of it and the panels and everything look like they've been painted really well with the decals as they should be. The interior, that sharp gray kind of uh, seat fabric as it should be, four speed manual. Estimated 16 to 20,000 quid. It still boggles my mind what people will pay for 80s hot Fords, but you know, nostalgia, I've said it before, is an expensive disease. When is a 987 Porsche Boxster not a Boxster? When it's one of these. This is based on a Boxster. It's called an iconic auto body 387 Speedster. So a completely rebodied Boxster. You never see them for sale, actually. This is, for full transparency, this is about to get valeted. This has come in out of the frost and it's about to be valeted in that lovely pearl white. Well, they've decided to pick one of the smallest cars in the room and park it next to one of the biggest. It's right next to a Bentley Arnage. This is a Honda S800 Coupe. And I used to have an S600 Coupe. If you've watched the late break show from the start, I did a video on mine. These are amazing, but you have to be quite short to fit in them. They're one of the absolute best Hondas ever made. The engine in there is a little beautiful masterpiece. There's actually two for sale in this room. There's this one, which is lot 173, estimated 18 to 22 grand. And then there's one there, also available in silver. Interesting thing about these is they went from full chain drive rear end to a solid axle. But although that was a cheaper thing to do, the engine is still 800 cc, 70 horsepower, 790 kilos and 100 miles an hour. As you probably know, I, I do like a, a classic American car, owning a few myself. Uh, this particular car, 68 Chevy Camaro SS, this was owned by uh, TV's Mike Brewer from Wheeler Dealers, who actually did the, uh, the restoration job on the car. I'll put a link above my head for the time I had a chat with Mike and had a look around his garage. But what makes this special is that it's an SS big block, numbers matching manual gearbox car with RS upgrades, RS being various things like the covered headlights. So this is a really desirable car in the States. Not sure how desirable it is in the UK. I would almost guarantee that it's gonna be worth more if you took it back to the motherland of the States. But anyway, estimate 40 to 50 grand. 396 cubic inch um, big blocks. So it's one of the smaller of the big blocks, if you see what I mean. Um, car was found by Mike in Seattle. Um, and it's had an uh, the engine's been rebuilt and upgraded with different cams, different um, exhaust, different headers, 410 horsepower. And he has spent over 40 grand on it. So actually, if you've spent 40 grand on it and it's selling for 40 to 50, it's actually very, very good value. Very pretty car though. The Morris Ital, probably Britain's worst car ever made, worse than the Allegro. And I can say that because I owned one. But this car is such a time warp. It has 4,548 original miles on the clock, never been rebuilt or anything. And it's been Z-barted, which is why it's not rotten. Rare, but nobody cares. Or maybe they do, because this is a Ford Probe, a car which has a terrible name and isn't massively loved. But again, mileage, less than a thousand original miles from new. It was an unwanted gift that was won in a competition. <laughs> and then just never used. This is one of the lowest cars that you could possibly buy. The 1971 Lotus Europa Twin Cam. Actually, one of Gordon Murray's fa favorite cars. He's got one in, in his collection in an equally cool color, Roman purple. This particular example, God, weighs nothing. Look, it's actually crotch height, this car. This particular example started life as an orange car. It's now a purple car. Big valve, 145 uh, brake horsepower engine. And they are a bit weird, this sort of pickup truck 
design, but I think they're really coming into their own, these sort of wedgy, weird, low tie these days. This one has had an enormous amount of work done on it. Uh, seems to be done to a, to a very high standard. Um, it's on the road. 12 year, 30 grand plus restoration on the car. And bearing in mind the estimate to buy the car is 22 to 26, seems to be pretty good value. And the color really, really suits it. Now, Mercedes G-Wagons are at their coolest when they're at their most original kind of slightly weathered non-AMG state, or in my personal opinion. And that's this. This is a UK car, right-hand drive, short wheelbase, so two-door. Um, and it's non-turbo diesel, which is the really reliable five-cylinder engine, but slow. It's weathered in, in the right places and it's totally usable. Estimate of 15 to 18 grand. Seems to have not been restored at all. And I really am quite fond of these. This is when they're cool, right? Coming from the Impreza's earlier to this, very, very kind of 90s turbocharged Japanese fest. And also it reminds you of the fact that you were either in the Subaru camp or the Mitsubishi Evo camp. I won't answer that question, it's up to you. But this, this is an Evo 5 from 1998 with 63,000 miles on the clock. Very similar mileage to that black Type R Subaru that I looked at and similar estimate, 18 to 22 grand again. Looks to be fairly original again. I can see there's a, a pod cluster with some HKS gauges on the A pillar, different aftermarket handbrake and uh, gear knob. The Recaro seats look really, really good without much wear. These are great, aren't they? They do remind me that I'm middle-aged because I remember when these were brand new and those Subarus were brand new. Look at the round all on here, wings, and it says SS, Jaguar. Before Jaguar was called Jaguar, it was owned by SS Swallow Sidecars, but after the war in 1946, couldn't really sell a car with SS badging on. Bit divisive. So they became Jaguar. Then Swallow re-emerged, and this is a Swallow car, 1954 Swallow Duretti. I've been told this is basically a rebodied Triumph TR2. So the underpinnings are Triumph TR2 with a slightly different body shell and this interesting Duretti badge. I have never seen one before um, and I don't actually know how many were made. But what I do know is this car is estimated 35 to 38,000 pounds. This is a 1954 car and I think it looks really pretty. I think it looks really, really pretty. But yeah, no sign of SS badging. No. Oh my gosh, I would never fit in there. I, would, I don't think I would ever fit in there. So maybe it carries that old tradition of old Jags being built for short people. Like how small the door is, the door's tiny. I don't know how I would get in there. Very unusual chunky stitching. I don't know if this is as was original, like a predecessor to the Audi TT baseball stitch. I, I can't get in this. Oh my gosh, can I get in it? It's got a huge steering wheel that doesn't move. I've, my foot's jammed under the brake pedal. Oh, okay. It's by sheer coincidence that I've found another uh, Japanese retro car. There's a lot of them in this particular CCA sale, but I can't walk past this because you just don't see them anymore. This is a Mazda RX-7 Turbo Cabriolet. I think this is the FC shape. And they made the Cabrio from 89 to 92. And this is an original UK car supplied in London in May of 92. It's had a new engine, which you know, remember it's the Wankel, it's very, very susceptible to um, bad maintenance and stuff. It was, re it was reconditioned 12,000 miles ago and it's recently had its fluids changed and a fresh overhaul of the fuel system, which is pretty crucial with modern fuels. This is 10 to 12,000 pound estimate. And I actually think it's probably not a cheaper way to get into the world of Wankel. They are increasingly desirable and the Cabrios are very, very seldom seen. Really interested in this. 
I'm really interested. If my, if my nephew Oscar was here, he'd be all over this car. Still looks pretty futuristic, actually. I nearly walked straight past this old VW bay window without giving it too much of a, an in-depth glance. But this is a one owner, 7,000 mile from new UK right-hand drive car. You never see VW bay windows unrestored from this country. And I've had a look underneath it and with a dry ice blast, I think this would be fantastic. Finished in merino yellow. I wish I was wearing merino wool layers today because it's blimmin' freezing. Yeah, the owner who's in his 80s has decided to finally hang up the keys and hand this on to somebody else. What an unrepeatable car. Honestly, I think 16 to 20 grand is being conservative. I think this is gonna be worth over 20 grand all day long. And it's the earlier base. It's got the more rounded bumpers and the round little cooling ear vents on the back corners there. So it's just a bit more dainty. If you watched my recent video with Radio One's Greg James, he'd love this car. It's had a few weird battle scars and scratches, but believe it or not, this has only done 7,200 miles from new. It's an E34 5 Series, but it's not an M5. It's a 535i manual. Ford console Capri, the first time Ford ever used the Capri badge on this car. They were known to be American looking rust buckets. This car actually was sold in America new and it's since been professionally rebuilt as a right hand drive car and it looks absolutely sensational. Estimate to 16 to 18 grand. Looks fast, isn't fast. These swoopy kind of gull wing style wings and these circular porthole lights, very reminiscent of not an old Ford, but an old Chevrolet. Early Chevrolet Impalas of this era and older had these kind of hallmark features. Well, that just about concludes my preview for this CCA Christmas auction, 156 lots. Now you can bid over the phone if you want to. You can obviously bid in the room today that you're watching this video is Thursday, preview day number one. Preview day number two is Friday, and Saturday, this coming Saturday, is the auction. You can watch the whole thing live streamed, and you can register to bid by going to classiccarauctions.co.uk. And all that's left for me to say is A, I hope you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already subscribed, and two, I really wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas. I need the toilet, so I'm just gonna... Merry Christmas. <laughs>